All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start talking about how we find the trigonometric values with any angle. So we're gonna do more than just look at our special angles and start to talk about how we can find trig values for other situations. So other angles, other triangles, just different situations than just the special angles we see on the unit circle. So to give us some framing for this, I'm going to highlight two different types of problems that involve finding trig values with other angles. Now, of course, we could come up with different types of examples that are outside of these two categories, but I think these are the most common types of problems we see in a pre-calculus or a trig course. So the first is that we're trying to find trig values and we're given two side lengths and the quadrant that the triangle or the angle is in. So we'll focus on this first type for this video, but I also wanna highlight the second type. So the other type of problem would be that we're given just one side length, but we're also given the angle. So we were told a side length and an angle, and we need to determine the other information. So as I mentioned, there could be other types, but these are the most common and they're what I like to focus on, so it's what I'm going to talk about. So let's do a first example, and I'm also going to be giving you some new Greek letters to use for your angles rather than just theta. So for this example, let's say we have an angle phi. So this symbol here is a Greek letter phi. Let's say this angle is in quadrant four, and we know that sine of the angle phi is negative four fifths. Then let's find the trig values for the other five trigonometric functions. Okay, so here I wasn't given the angle, but I was given the sine value. So I can figure some things out. I know I'm in quadrant four, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a triangle in quadrant four, where that hypotenuse is where the terminal side of the angle would be, so it's in quadrant four. Then I know that I have this angle phi, and I'm looking at a triangle with this reference angle that helps us find the information for phi. So we know that sine of phi is negative four over five. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm thinking that the four is the opposite and the five is the hypotenuse. And I notice I'm gonna to need to deal with that negative too, but I'll start with the four and the five. So typically we always have a positive hypotenuse just because it's like the radius of the circle. And we describe one of the sides, the X or the Y as negative since we're in a quadrant and the X or the Y could be negative. So here in quadrant four, our Y values are negative since they're below the X axis, they're below the horizontal axis. And so I'm actually going to label it as negative four on that side. Now I can confirm sine is opposite over hypotenuse or negative four over five as I was told. So what I've done so far is drawn a triangle in the correct quadrant and labeled the sides I know. What we're going to need now is the third side length. And the reason we need this is because we're trying to find all of the trig values. And so we're going to need all of the sides of the triangle in order to do ratios. In order to do this, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem works specifically for triangles that have a right angle, which we have here. And it's that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are like the legs of the triangle and c is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label my unknown side with a square and then I'm gonna write the formula out. You could give it a variable name, I'm just writing it as square here. So negative four squared plus our unknown squared is equal to five squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm just gonna solve for my unknown side length. So negative four squared is 16 and five squared is 25. Then I'm going to subtract 16 over so that I have my unknown isolated. So I have that my unknown squared or the box squared is equal to 25 minus 16. 25 minus 16 is nine. And then to solve for my unknown or my box, I'm going to take the plus or minus square root of both sides. So when I take a square root, I need to do the plus or minus because both three squared and negative three squared give us the same thing. They both give us nine. So we need to use that plus or minus. And so my two solutions are three and negative three. Now we really need to pick which one of these it is because our triangle has just one side length that we're trying to label. There aren't two answers. So in our example, we're in quadrant four. And so this corresponds to a positive X value. We're going to the right by some amount. And so that is a positive X. 
So I'm gonna use positive three as my side length and label it here on my picture. In general, you'll just need to think through which quadrant you're in and whether it's positive or negative, the side length you're trying to find out. All right, so now we're ready to find the trig values for the other functions. So I'm gonna redraw my triangle here. My side lengths are three, negative four, and five. And I'm going to write out all of the other trig functions I'm trying to find. So we were already given sine of phi is negative four over five, and we need the rest. So for cosine of phi, I see that this is three over five because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. As you're learning these, you probably need to refer to the definitions of all of these trig functions as you're getting them in your brain and memorizing them. I'm just not referring to them here because I have the definitions in my brain, I've memorized them, but it's totally okay if you have like a reference sheet or something you're looking back on to have the definitions. Then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's negative four over three. And now the remaining three trig values are the reciprocals of the one we already found, or you can think of them in terms of side lengths, but I'm gonna use the reciprocals. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's negative five over four. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's five over three. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's three over negative four, or negative three fourths. Here, the negatives in the fractions, they can kind of go wherever, they all represent the same thing. And I'll label the side length ratios as well in case that's helpful to you. And there we go, we found all of our values. So for this problem, we just needed to draw a triangle in the correct quadrant, find the remaining side that we didn't have the value for, and then do all of our ratios as described by the definitions for each of these trig functions. It's probably more likely that you'll only be asked for maybe one or two of these trig functions, not all six, but I'm doing them all here just so you can see how that works. Okay, let's try this on another example, and I'm gonna let you try this one first before I go through it. So let's say that if we have tangent of alpha, here's a new letter for you, this is the Greek letter alpha. Let's say that this angle alpha has a tangent of one over six. And let's say that alpha is in quadrant three, and find cosine of alpha and cosecant of alpha. So here I'm just asking you for a subset of the six trig functions, we'll just look at two of them. We wanna find cosine of alpha and cosecant of alpha. So why don't you pause the video now, try this out on your own. Remember, draw your triangle in the right quadrant, find the missing side length, and then find the proper ratio. Try it out and then we'll come back and do it together. All right, so this angle alpha is in quadrant three, and so I'm going to draw the terminal side of the angle here in quadrant three, just somewhere. This picture is just a best guess of what's going on. Then I know that we could draw a triangle using the reference angle that goes up to the horizontal, and so I'm drawing my triangle here. Then I want to label my sides. So I was told that tangent of alpha is one over six. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and so I'm seeing here that the opposite side is one and the adjacent side is six. Now I'm noticing that we're here in quadrant three and in quadrant three, both my X and my Y should be negative. So we're going to the left, that's a negative X and we're going down, that's a negative Y. So actually my side lengths are negative six and negative one. So you'll notice that if we have one sixth, that's actually the same as negative one divided by negative six those negatives cancel, and so we get a positive one-sixth as our tangent. So this is a good example to show you that we need to be careful about which quadrant we're in and just be really mindful of the side lengths to think like, okay, these need to be negative, I should put negatives in. Tangent is a tricky one since it has the x over y. It doesn't really record whether they're negative or not. It just says a positive one sixth and you kind of have to do a little bit of work on your own to make sure if those are actually positive or if it's both negative, if it's negative one over negative six. And that's what's happening in this case. So, okay, we have our triangle. We have negative one and negative six as our side lengths. 
and we're going to need the third side in order to find our trig functions. In particular, I'm noticing that cosine and cosecant, their definitions both include the hypotenuse, which is labeled R here, so I'm going to need to know what that value is in order to find cosine and cosecant. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem again. So I have that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. So I have negative 1 squared plus negative 6 squared equals r, my hypotenuse, squared. Now I just need to solve for r. So 1 squared is 1, 6 squared is 36, and that's equal to r squared. 1 plus 36 is 37, and so I have 37 is r squared. And now I just need to take the plus or minus square root to solve for r. So r is square root of 37 or negative square root of 37. Similar to the last example, I need to pick which answer I'm going to use here since there's just one side length for r. We don't like have two values for it in our picture. Typically we choose that the hypotenuse is always a positive side length. So we use the x and the y side lengths to account for the negatives that are going on depending on where we are, which quadrant we're in but we're going to go with the assumption that the hypotenuse is always labeled as positive. I like to think that the radius of a circle is always positive, and so that's why we have a positive hypotenuse as well. So positive square root of 37 is our r value, and I will label it on our triangle. So using this triangle that now has all three of our sides, we're going to find the remaining trig functions that we were asked to do. So I was told that tangent of alpha is one over six, and I need to find cosine of alpha and cosecant of alpha. So again, referring back to the definitions, cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's negative six over square root of 37, and that's our cosine value. Then for cosecant, the definition of cosecant says that it's the hypotenuse over the opposite, so the hypotenuse is the square root of 37 over our negative one, and I'm actually just going to rewrite that as negative square root of 37. So dividing by negative one, we can just write it as like a negative of the number. And there we go. Those are our missing trig values that we were asked to find. Okay, so that's the first type of example that we'll see when we're asked to find trig values of other angles. In the next video, I'll go through the second type of problem and talk about what we do when we have one side length and one angle. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.